All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And if you've ever thought about getting into CNC's, but you don't have a whole lot of room for a machine like this guy, or you really don't want to spend quite as much money as this guy would cost over here, uh, we have a new alternative for some of you folks. Now, this is my Jinmitsu 4040 Pro Max, and Jinmitsu is a company that I'm familiar with. I've had multiple machines that they've made, and recently they were working on a machine and they sent me out a prototype to test, and I've been playing with this little guy. This is the Jinmitsu Cubico. It is the smallest CNC I've ever had here in the shop, but I have found out that it can do some pretty cool stuff and is great for familiarizing yourself with the process and learning the software. So today we're gonna to talk about this little highly portable CNC. You can literally hold it with one hand. So let's put it over on the table and let's get started checking this thing out and see what it can do. All right guys, so before we go over this machine, I wanna stress again, I've been working with Jinmitsu on this machine for about a month now. This is a prototype machine. There are things that you will see with my machine that maybe aren't quite as good as they should be. Those things are being developed by Jinmitsu. Uh, I've been actually sending them pictures and videos and just letting them know the things that I found along the way. And they're telling me that they're gonna address these in the consumer model. The machine is technically still in Kickstarter. Uh, I think it's getting close to the end, but it is still in Kickstarter for now. So just don't be hating on me if this machine is not exactly what you get. Uh, when you get yours. Now, I will say, from what they've told me, the release model is gonna be upgraded from this one. For instance, I had an issue with mine. There's a little limit switch right here in the top that when you set this lid on here, uh, this little cover, it pushes uh, a limit switch up here on the top. With mine, when I first got it, I had a little bit of problem. This material is a little, uh, it, it wiggles a little. Uh, when it's cold, it's pretty stiff, but as it warms up, of course, it gets a little bit easier to twist. So I 3D printed myself a little stiffener to put right there, and it also serves as a handle to, to hold this thing by to put this little cover on there. So <laughs> let's get started looking at the machine now. All right, so before we actually go like piddling with the machine, I wanna go over a few of the little specs for you. According to their website, this machine is gonna have 150 by 110 by 40 work area. That means it's gonna be 150 wide, 110 deep, and you're gonna have 40 millimeters of travel in the Z axis. That's gonna allow you to do thicker uh, objects up to a thickness of, let's say, 40 millimeters, because wherever the tip of the, the bit is, you've got to be able to travel that much to make it all the way through it. So 40 millimeters is going to be the tops as far as how far you can go through material. Uh, also, uh, the machine does run on 120 watts, of course. Uh, the spindle is a 75 watt spindle. It does have an ER11 collet with 8 inch capabilities. That's what I've been using is 8 inch uh, bits. I've been using some Jinmitsu bits and just some generic Amazon bits that I, I purchased online. I do have some IDC as well as some Genie bits that I'll test later on. But for today, we're just going basing this off of the bits that, you know, traditionally would come with Jinmitsu machines. Uh, also, the spindle max RPM is 10,000 RPMs and the the spindle's max travel speed is rated at 2,000 is what they're saying. So just to give you those, those numbers in case you need those. Now, as far as the machine, I'm gonna say the machine probably only weighs about 15 pounds, maybe. You know, if you can carry your groceries in from the vehicle, you should be able to move this thing around your shop okay. Uh, a couple of gallons of milk's about what this thing weighs. So everybody wants to know, Clack, how does it work? How does the machine hold up to different materials. Well, I can tell you, I have done uh, a piece of poplar. This is some poplar that I did. It did a pretty good job. Keep in mind, I'm using some uh, some bits that probably aren't the best. Uh, this was just like a uh, 30 degree uh, V-bit. It, it did okay. Uh, I probably could have played with the settings that I used a little better uh, and got some, some better results. Uh, I will also put some links down to the uh, bits that I've been getting. These are the down cut, these are the ball nose and the flat bits that I've been running with it. So if we're referring to those, this is gonna be, this is gonna be them. They're 3.175 sized bits. Uh, one is a flat end mill up cut. The other is a ball nose end mill up cut. 
Uh, these are the 30 degree bits that I have been running. Uh, they're the same ones that came with the machine. These are the ones that ship with my machine. These are like a 30 degree, uh, 3.175 millimeter uh, bit. And it's just like a little little knife. It looks like the little, little knife blades. Uh, but they also came with a couple of bits for doing the uh, PC boards. So there's that. Now, this machine is advertised to be able to do PC boards. That's not something that I do a lot of. Uh, they send you a couple of these little blanks here. Haven't got around to playing with those because, let's face it, I'm a woodworker. I'm not making electronics. Not something I'm into. And I'm going to run through here real quick and show you a few of the engraves, and then we're going to do a little bit of the, the video of the machine working and just kind of talk about some of the other things as well as I'm going to do a little walkthrough of the machine, get you a closer look of how it's constructed. So this is some clear acrylic that I did with the machine. So if you're wanting to do uh, acrylic, this machine done a really good job. Uh, I, all I used on these was the upcut bits that I was talking about earlier. Uh, you have the ball nose and the flat end mill. Uh, and it does a really good job of both cutting because I cut this piece here. I did a pocket on it and I cut it out as well. Uh, it, was, it was basically in a little piece like this. So it done a good job of cutting this out. Uh, with, as always with this machine, the one thing that I will tell you is it has a metal base so that if you wanna do aluminum and metals and stuff like that, you have that option. But I created myself a little laser file and cut it on one of my other lasers and made myself a little miniature spool board. Uh, it's only a, about four and a half millimeters thick, but that gives me the ability to still screw things to the base. But if I do mess up and go too deep, I'm not hitting this uh, steel bed here and messing up any bits. So that would be something I would probably recommend is, is make yourself a little spool board if you have a bigger laser or a bigger machine. Uh, if not, you know, be careful. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna break out my little camera and we're gonna walk around. I'm gonna take you through all of the, 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 the way that it's constructed. And then we're just gonna go over a little bit of the cutting that I found and what I found out about it so far. So let's get that done. All right guys, so starting here at the front of the machine, as you can see, the controller is kind of small. Uh, for someone who has really big fingers, <laughs> this might be challenging. Uh, luckily, I can, I can make it work. Uh, but you operate this controller and then you can move the, uh, the axis, like I can move the axis over there. All right, so if I wanted to then bring the Y axis in, I would take and navigate down to where it says Y axis, and then you got plus or minus, so you can go uh, subtract or addition to the axis. And I'm gonna go from the zero, zero, I'm hitting the plus button, which is gonna take me towards the back of the machine, all right? This little piece, disregard this piece. Uh, this camera that I'm using has magnets on the bottom of it, and this is my camera that I use to monitor the engrave. So that's, that's where that sits, so that's what that's for. So this is not part of the machine. This is my little, my little metal bracket for my camera to sit on and magnetize to. So you'll notice that this 75 watt spindle, this is a spindle like you see on a lot of the 3018s and some of the other Jinmitsu machines. It does have the ER11 collet. Uh, it's fairly effective on this little machine. Uh, I don't know if this is the way the, the consumer model is going to be, but you'll notice it does have the, the stepper motor mounted up here on some spacers. Uh, you've got the screw that comes down, uh, linear bar rails or tube rails, whichever you want to call them there. Uh, the gantry, most of this is plastic. Uh, that's more or less why the machine is so light. Uh, it does have limit switches. You've got a limit switch on this side as well as one on the other side. Uh, here with the, uh, with the bars for the rails. Uh, screws, does have screws to drive it. There's going to be some of your connectors uh, for the laser. Uh, not real sure what all of these are for because I haven't really looked at the manual. But there's your micro SD card slot. It's got those cool LEDs in the back. Uh, like I said, with the controller, the controller has magnets. It also has a little cable, so you can pop it out and pop it in here. Uh, around the side of the machine over here, there's really nothing of interest. So around on this side, you have the uh, e-stop button right here, which is not exactly what you would expect, but like I said, prototype guys, that may change. Uh, and you also have the power button right there. Uh, around here on the side, you've got USB and the power input from the power supply. You have basically nothing except for this one little knockout, which 
Not sure what that's for, but it could be for like air assist or something like that because. So here on the front, there's that little knockout that we were talking about on the back right there. So, I mean, you could bring in air assist if you wanted through that hole, but I don't think you're gonna be bringing any kind of dust collection in through there. All right, guys, so now that we've got through with looking at how it's built, how it's put together, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the engraving that I've done through my testing so far uh, so that you guys can get an idea of what the machine is capable of. All right, guys, test number one. <laughs> go big or go home, right? All right, so I had a little bit of aluminum laying around, and I managed to dig through my eighth-inch bits, and I found this one bit. It's like a flat, cutting-edge bit. It looks like it was made more for plastics and acrylics. Uh, and of course you'll see what it does on acrylics here in a minute uh, but I figured I would try it on uh, aluminum to see how it did uh, you can see that my speeds and feeds are a little fast uh, for this bit I did not take the time to really work the settings out but this was gonna this was a little more than it wanted you can see when it makes the lap the bits kind of dancing a little bit uh, definitely not good speeds and feeds for that so uh, it can engrave aluminum with the correct bit. I, I can see some potential here, but I really haven't had a chance to sit down and dial in the settings for aluminum. I just bounced over to a little bit simpler mediums. All right, so for this, guys, we're using a piece of clear acrylic, and I'm using the same bit that I was using just a second ago. Uh, this bit actually did a lot better on acrylic, uh, being that it's the, the flat cutting edge like that. Uh, Started off just wanting to do a pocket on this piece of acrylic, but eventually I wind up uh, doing the pocket down a few millimeters and then once I got that mastered, I set it to go ahead and cut it out. This is that little piece that you saw earlier that, it, you know, a couple of, couple of inch circle with the pocket in the middle. This is it. Uh, I just cut it out of a piece of scrap that I had left over from a laser project. This is one that uh, a piece that I had messed up on and I figured, you know, while I was testing the machine, this was a medium that I feel like would be good for this uh, machine to use. So if you're making backlit signs and, you know, things like that, maybe some earrings or whatnot, uh, acrylic would be a good medium for the machine without putting a whole lot of strain on it. I had no issues with wobble. Uh, the bit was really, really quiet running through the acrylic as compared to the aluminum. And like I said, it cut it out clean. The edges just actually surprised me how clean that it, it cut it out. So uh, acrylic is definitely a medium that you're going to want to get into with this machine. I could probably have pushed the bit a little harder. But like I said, I didn't want to break my only little bit that I had for acrylic. So uh, yeah, let's get moving to the next piece. All right, so this next piece of material, this is just a little piece of poplar, and I've been playing around with it, trying to get some speeds and feeds dive, dialed in, and I'm starting to push this thing as far as the depth of cut to try to see how much depth of cut I can get out of it. And I'm running like a one millimeter depth of cut on it here. Uh, this upcut bit, I like a downcut bit typically, but like I said, I don't have any of those. Uh, this upcut bit is stringing this material like nobody's business. And it's making the mess inside there a little bit worse. But if you notice, it's kind of acting like an air assist. So it is keeping the chips off of there. Uh, but yeah, I had a little string in with the material trying to string up. But I am pushing this thing, trying to see exactly how deep I can get it to cut. I'm just running like a flattening pass, basically, uh, on this piece of wood. It did really good. Uh, the finish, once the piece uh, got through running, the finish was actually smooth. And the tool lines, of course, you could see them but you, you couldn't really feel them. Uh, and that's the, the thing that I was looking for was to see if, if it's creating a flat surface or if there's any irregularities or you know high spots, low spots in there. And it, there were really. Now, the one thing that I will say about this machine, the spindle that's on there looks a lot like the same spindle they use for the 3030s, uh, the uh, 44, that, the 4040, the little 75 uh, watt spindle. It's very likely that you could engineer a dust collection for this thing uh, using one of those little plastic pieces that screws onto the bottom of the spindle. I did check and this machine does have uh, those little screw holes in the bottom of the spindle. Now I didn't have the uh, actual little 
plastic piece to check to see if it would attach, but it, it looks like it could. So if you've got one of those machines or if you have that little uh, dust boot, there is a possibility that maybe you could engineer that. But with this machine, as quiet as it is, to be honest, I just let it pile up because a shop vac running in the background would kind of ruin the quietness of it. It is relatively quiet once you put the cover on there. Uh, you know, the spindle's a 75 watt, so it's not that big of an impact. Uh, so that was kind of refreshing to just let the CNC run and still be able to hear myself talk <laughs> in the background. Uh, but guys, like I said, with the machine, it's running right now. I am running uh, Candle, the software that they send, uh, that Jin Mitsu typically use. I'm running Candle to send the job to the machine. But to design the file, I used Vectric. Uh, VCarve is the actual, VCarve Pro is the actual software that I have. Uh, but you will need to have some type of software, whether it be Easel. Uh, Jinmitsu says they do have their own app that you can use to run the machine with. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, I do all my designing for my machines in Vectric, so that's kind of what I'm running here. Uh, the post processor is just a simple uh, GRBL millimeter post processor, and you can see that that spindle just caught one of those little shoe strings. And so now it's made its own fan, and it's actually clearing... Uh, the material off of the workpiece. Uh, so <laughs> there we go. But but yeah, so long as you have a software that you can use to design the files uh, and, you know, using Candle to send it, uh, it's, it's, it's very, very simple to use. The fundamentals of this little guy are exactly the same as the bigger machines. And I think it may be a good machine for folks to learn on that maybe don't want to spend the money or have the time to commit to something bigger. So there we go. All right, guys, so that's a quick little rundown of the machine. I'm going to try to keep doing some testing with it, uh, keep playing with the machine, seeing what it's capable of. Uh, but I just wanted to get a little bit of a video out for you guys to look at. And Jinmitsu reached out to me and said that you guys wanted to see the machine working. And so that's what we got. Uh, keep in mind, again, that this machine is a prototype, beta, whatever you want to call it, the, uh, subject to change before being released. It's still in Kickstarter. So some of those things that I have that I don't like about the machine should be changed by the time the consumer model comes out. But just don't hold, hold, hold it against me <laughs> if it's not. But like I said, this is, this is a decent little machine if you want to learn the fundamentals of how a CNC works. If you're going to do small projects, if you're wanting to make like acrylic, you know, do acrylic earrings or something like that, maybe uh, this would definitely be something that could do stuff like that. Uh, but you're going to be limited by the smaller work area. But on the plus side, it is very, very portable and you can just pick it up, take it with you. So I hope the video was helpful, guys. There will be links down below if you want to look at the rest of the specs and just check out some of the, the literature that Jinmitsu has on the machine. Feel free to click those links down below. And until next time, be safe and have a good day.